Okay, welcome back for part four of our Cove showcase playthrough. One of the advantages of shorter episode lengths, and I've been going slightly above average in terms of my, my usual episode lengths here, uh, is that before I start recording, I do tend to have just a moment to actually kind of plan out my moves a bit more, as opposed to my usual approach, which is to kind of wing it a bit. So something I've noticed is we can get the pyre in our Conflux town before the end of the week. In order to do so, we need to get ourselves four more wood, and one more mercury. So the mercury is pretty easy to do, we just need to trade, but in order to get some wood, the best thing we can do is send Casimitra up to pick up this wood right here. And then she doesn't have enough movement points left to go and pick up the gold. Uh, Nagash at this point is just going to form part of the chain. So if we just put him roughly within one day's journey of the Conflux Town, and if we actually go back to the Conflux Town, we're going to pick up a Storm Elemental just for the extra speed on Jabarkus. Get rid of the Nymph and just make sure we leave him tucked in the town. And then over here we've got Malekith the Warlock and Darjim. So what we're going to do with these two is we're going to send Darjim over to pick up some gems. Uh, we're going to move Lord Hart. Firstly to pick up a few more resources from this, which gets us some more ore. And we're just going to move him along as far as we can. Then Malekith we're going to send in that direction because he is of course a level 10 hero, so we might as well see if we can get some use out of him. Uh, Fafna, we're just going to go and see if there's anything else to explore as we do find one final chest. And at this point, I don't think there's really much we can do with him, so we're just going to have to uh, try and sail our way back. I'm hoping we'll have just enough movement points to make it back to the shore next turn. Darjim, we're going to send back to the Tower Town, and we're just going to tuck him in. Then going back to our original Cove Town, we can then release Ain. We can go and pick up a few more crystals, and just about almost get back to the town. And that really just leaves Gernison and Jeremy left to go. So something else we can do, as well as building the pyre, is we can build the city hall in our rampart town. So we'll do that next. Then we need just one more mercury in order to build the pyre. So let's go ahead and do that. And that pretty much sets up all of our towns for next week. So all that's left to do is to begin the war with red who is one of our two remaining opponents, the final Cove opponent, and pretty manageable it has to be said. He does have he does have a few Nagas, he does have a few Nicks, and he does have a few Giants, but overall I think we're quite clearly stronger. Uh, I'm going to send Gernison along just to pass over the Psychic Elementals. The rest of these units I think we can probably go without and just leave them on Gernison. But what I'm likely to do is, I'm, I am going to focus pretty much entirely on trying to attack Red and finish him off. So, and there is a slight flaw to my plan now that I think about this. It would have been great if we could get Ain back uh, to the Cove Town, so that we could actually open up this prison. At the moment, the only way we can do that is by letting someone go, so I could let Fafna go. But, I think I'd prefer not to, honestly. Yeah, I think it's kind of a waste of gold, so what I'm going to do is just try and scout as far as I can with Gernison. Uh, as he's just about not able to make it to Ashden, but we can see that Ashden is currently not owned by Red. So I actually stand corrected about what I said in the previous episode where I thought Red had already kind of explored this area. I now think that they probably haven't. I think this is just the design of the map, that there's not too many freebies. So that would explain um, the kind of lack of resources that aren't guarded. But that is all of our heroes moved. I'm, yeah, like I say, I'm not worried about taking Ashden. I think the main thing is just to go and take on Andal. So we'll just push a little bit closer, and it doesn't reveal too much else. It does really look to me like this hasn't been explored. We can see to the south there are some sharpshooters guarding a Pandora's box. I think I can probably go for that, but for now we are just going to focus on taking on Andal. Um, I don't know if he has tactics or not, so I have to be a little bit careful with my formation. So the main things to look out for are the Nagas towards the top, and the Giants towards the bottom. I don't think formation matters too much here. I think this should pretty much work, so let's just go for it. Okay, so we're expected to take quite a few losses. Well, not really, we're expected to take very few losses, but one of the losses is to the Sea Serpent, so I want to see if we can avoid that, uh, as he's proved to not have tactics, which is great. Should give us a lot more freedom about how we choose to attack him.
Okay, so I pretty much just want to send everyone forward. I'd rather not be in range of these, but they are pretty slow. And Nagas likewise. So if we just send our sea witches up to here, that should be pretty safe. Uh, I'm going to send these guys forward to here. And these guys I might just use to block in the giants. So we get first turn, we're going to go straight for the mass haste. I think these guys should go for whoever we're going to do the most amount of damage to, so... Looking across these, we will get to do our full damage on the Nagas. So I'll start off with those. Managed to take out four of them, which is good. If we attack with these, we can take out all the pirates. Uh, we can also take out all the magi. And we're slightly out of range of the next, so let's just go for the magi. And then these guys we're going to send to attack both of these stacks at once. Let me just check this actually. So yeah, these guys are 11 speed, these guys are 7, so that's very much going to be completely fine. We can just block these off. Uh, these guys are free to attack either of these two stacks, or we can go for the Nagas. The Nagas are already slightly weakened. I think we'll go for these instead. And then these guys can finish off the Nagas, they can finish off the Nyx. And they can finish off the Genies. Biggest threat. Probably the Nagas. There's really not much in it, but I am going to go for the Nagas. As well, okay, so our Gargoyle has actually missed their turn. Uh, which means the Giants are now free to come out and attack, and... That's really unfortunate because we're definitely going to take some losses to those. Yeah, that's pretty unlucky. Okay, but they actually go for the one stack and then they flee, so that went completely fine. Perfect. Okay, so we are in range of, um... Of the Sharpshooters. I don't know how many there are. I am just going to see what this is first. So we jump through here, we can see Manfred and Oris. They're both pretty weak. And it looks like they're actually going for the Grail. They might already have it as well. But it looks to me like they are just digging. So we can at least reach Manfred. He probably doesn't have tactics. He is uh, a magic hero. Um, he's not expected to do anything to us. I'm not sure if auto combat actually gives these guys the chance to cast a spell, so I think we should at least give them that chance. And if we're really lucky... I was going to say it's possible we could finish them off, but we do have negative morale. So I don't think that's going to happen. We'll just do as much damage as we can. Just going to check the gargoyles can reach, which yes they can. Because of the Psychic Elementals attacking in two stacks at once, we are able to finish them off. Uh, we take all of his artifacts. I didn't really get a good look at those. The so Ring of Vitality is pretty good, but we already have it. Uh, Ring of Conjuring. Not really too useful. I don't think we'll go for that. Uh, we've got another Equestrian's Gloves. This is one of those things where I, I don't remember if they stack or not. But I'm leaning towards thinking they probably don't. So let's just leave that one off. And then that's all of Jeremy's movement points gone. Actually pretty unfortunate because we're right next to the watering place. But never mind, I think we just have to accept that. So let's just end the turn. See what red does. As, uh, it looked like they didn't really move. It was a bit strange. And they have their sea serpents with this guy. Uh, one to four of them. He's got to be now their strongest hero. Let's just double check. Yeah. So he's not too bad. Green does have Hydras now, but yeah, not too worried about him either. So Gremlin population has doubled, so we have 144 Gremlins in this town. I, I still don't think I care quite enough to um, actually do something with that. Uh, we've also picked up Manfred as a possible hero of our own. I think we should try and pick him up. But first thing I'm going to do is make sure I take this Inferno Town. So let's go over to Gurnison. Some losses expected. I should have really dismissed the skeletons, just in case of morale, but... Pretty sure morale can't affect the Ballista. I could be wrong. We can do a bit of damage to these. And then these guys won't get the kill. They're just going to defend and then wait. These guys won't get the kill, so it's just going to be down to their gogs. Okay, 
So that's completely fine. So we've taken their Inferno Town and we're free to come and explore. Uh, so several behemoths guarding the Orb of Tempestuous Spire. I suppose we could actually hire Manfred and have him as uh, a really good Inferno hero, but that's that's kind of like a really long-term plan. Uh, and at this point, I think we are going to be within range of finishing off this map pretty quickly. Okay, so Oris does manage to get one kill against our Corsairs. We're once again going to see if we can just rush them. So if we just go for mass haste, pretty sure we can just finish these guys off pretty much straight away. There we go. So she has no artifacts. Um, there are some gremlins guarding the way to the north. I'm still fairly confident that's where he's come from. It is, of course, Month of the Gremlin, so we are just going to go after that. Um, there's a Redwood Tower there. I do want to see what that is, but I also want to save as many movement points as possible to go for the push. I think there's a really good chance this is Purple's starting zone. As we can see, there is a town up there. So if it is purple starting zone, then we can go over to the tower town and we can actually upgrade our gargoyles into obsidian gargoyles, which I really like the idea of. And then if we return to this, we do now have two firebirds available to us, a number more psychic elementals and things like that, I think, before we decide what to do with that. Let's just move all of our scouts. So we've got one final object there, and we're just about not able to land for that, but never mind. So Gernison, I am going to send through. I'm not sure he has enough moving points to make it to the tower, which he doesn't, but never mind. Let's just go for the Crystal Cavern. And then Lord Hart is free to scout. I think we're just going to send him straight through. Let's just park here for the turn. And then we will start bringing Malekith along. Return Ain to the town, because I don't think we need to start uh, hiring things here just yet. Okay, so if we return to this town, we're going to pick up all of the Psychic Elementals, the Firebirds, and the Storm Elementals. And that is pretty much all of our money gone. We can afford to hire, I think, one more. So yeah, I think that's a fairly decent backup force. Let's send these along to Nagash. Then Nagash can pass them over to Malekith. And we're just going to send Malekith along in the same direction. I'm going to move Nagash over to um, start transferring some units from our original Cove Town. And we've left ourselves with no gold left to invest in our buildings, but that's completely fine. Let's just end the turn, see what red does. So I didn't see where they went there. And still no sign of green. Lord Hart is now able to travel a very long distance. I think I will send him off-road. Because we've got stables and we've got a watering hole. As we can actually see, there's a way through to our tower town there. That's good to know. Let's see if we can find anything else. So there's actually another zone to the south. Going to be a struggle to move through here. So we're blocked off by some gremlins, there's a good chance that he has been here. And in fact, it's possible this is his starting zone. Let's actually check on that. No, so it's actually all unclaimed. So his starting zone... It's not easy to see. So his starting zone, I'm really not sure. Because all I can see is the town to the north, which I'm pretty sure must be a tower town. So unless green has captured it, this is interesting. I think green has captured 
Let's see about this. I think green has captured red's original town. No. They have the same number of towns, so I'm not sure what I missed here. I can only seem to see that one town. Let's go over to Gurnison and let's go and visit this. So that reveals that he has, I think, broken into the zone. No, he hasn't. I didn't see the Greater Basilisk hidden behind the mountain there. Yeah, so none the wiser, really. We can see slightly further into the snow zone. And yeah, I'm pretty confident he has pretty freshly taken that off the purple player because we can see an abandoned ore pit. I'm just going to go for a straight push. I'm going to ignore the magic well. And I'm pretty sure we saw that it's to the north. A free level is hard to turn down, so let's just go for it. Okay, so he needs 10 gems. I'm pretty sure we can do that. I'm also pretty tempted to just let Fafna go. Because we can just bring out Darjim. Let's just return Jabarkas to the Conflux Town. Let's take this guy out. Go pick up a few gems, come back. Pick up the level. And only costs one spell point to use view air, so let's just do it, as we can see it's to the west. And it's not completely undefended, but it's not particularly strongly defended either. I'm not really sure where we go after this. Yeah, I really have no idea where his next town is, but let's just go for the attack on this. As there uh, appears to be... No sign of any heroes. Okay, so in terms of spells, we've got Meteor Shower, it's going to do 175 points of damage. I think that's either just enough to kill the Gargoyles, or it comes very close. So, let's just go for this. Nope, I stand very corrected. I completely worked that out wrong. Okay, those guys come out, they get some kills, I don't really mind, I'm just going to send these guys across. Uh, and let's just see if we can take these out. So yeah, we do, we do manage to finish them off in one round. And we claim the lookout tower. And we can see a monolith to the east. Which will take us out to the wasteland. I think I want to go for this Pandora's box. And then let's just go ahead and pick up a scout. I'm going to let Fafna go. I really can't see him being useful at this point, and I think it's more useful just to be able to actually pick someone up. So, let's pick up Solmir. Leave pretty much everything behind. As uh, They actually haven't got the upgraded parapet, but I think that's definitely worth having. And let's just go see what we can find. So, there's going to be something either to the west or to the east. Okay, so red actually has upgraded to Haspids. That's kind of intimidating, but yeah. It does also suggest that Spint was on his way back to his town. And we did see him go this way, so we can see him there, that's his force. So he's got Sea Dogs, he's got pretty much everything upgraded. I think we can beat that. Uh, Kasmitra, we're going to send to pick up a few more resources. Gernison, I think, does need to start coming back. Because... I think green is just to the south. So there's a good chance he comes to attack us next. So Malekith has some decent units. We have to go for a pack of sharpshooters. Because we have the Firebirds, I think that's fairly safe. Let's go for it. 
Yeah, so very few losses expected. I am just going to accept that, and I should probably save this for Jeremy, but Jeremy has quite a lot to be doing, so let's just pick it up ourselves. Okay, so 5,000 gold is not bad. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to send Malekith up. And we're just going to pass all the units along to Gurnison. Make sure we dismiss these. And I'm going to send Malekith just over to defend our Inferno Town. And just tuck him in. We'll get the tavern so we can get the village hall. And yeah, we should then be safe to start using Gurnison to make a bit of a push to the south. I'm slightly reluctant to take on green. But I'm also aware that green has only just got hydras, so they're probably not too strong. We return to this town, we can get the upgraded nest pretty cheap, so let's go ahead and do that. And let's go back to this town too. Mage go level 4, we're still some way off. Need to get ourselves a few extra gems. Okay. I think that might be enough for this turn. I can't really see a massive downside to going for the Vault of Ashes. That's going to get us an extra Firebird next week. And then Nagash, I think we're just going to leave in place. See what Red does. Uh, so they, they decide not to chase us down. And yeah, we have seen green. They turn back, so that must have been a scout. I still want to go for this Pandora's box. Even though I know exactly where red is, because it is literally just to the west, so let's do it. Oh crap. I really need to do something about this morale. If I just slow these... They can't get morale, so I think that's fine. They go forward, they attack these, they don't do too much damage. And we can then attack these. And let's just weaken these as much as we can. So these guys still have a bit of HP left. These come forward, Cannon can take these out, and these guys should be able to take these out, so that's all good. 40 more gargoyles. I, I don't know why the map just seems to be giving us so many of these, but I'm not complaining. Okay, so let's hire everything we can. And let's upgrade these. I'm going to leave the Psychic Elementals behind. And we need to get ourselves some gems. I'm not sure how best to do that. I think for the sake of keeping things simple, we should probably just trade. Pick up a second giant and start making our move towards red zone. Lord Heart doesn't really have too much to be doing, I think we'll just start moving back. Star Gem that we're going to tuck into the town. Gurnison can push to the south. But... Don't think I want to do that. I think, if anything... We probably just want to start building up, because we're going to be fairly defensive, at least for a few turns. So I can't see a massive downside to just going for the fort and actually starting to build this up. It should keep us fairly safe, so let's do it. And then Gunnison, we're just going to send to free this up, see who this is. So this is Elmore, who's a level 1 captain. We can't really do too much with him, so I think we'll just start moving him back towards our original town. Solmir does survive, so let's go to the west and see what we can find. Okay, so it looks like it's actually a dead end. 
These can't have been produced because it's only month two, and we know that month two produced extra uh, gremlins. So they've never broken through that. Okay, so rather than waste too much time, I think we're just going to start making rash decisions once again, because honestly, why not? Um, if we go for the Miner's Guild, that's not going to help us at all. Let's go to a town that's actually useful. So this town can give us the Wall of Knowledge. We've already gone past, but honestly, I don't care. Um, at this point, because I think we can start closing them down, I am just going to start spending resources wherever I can, and probably not worry too much about how efficient it is. I'm going to send Gernis in here for now, and yeah, I'm sure we can keep building, but I think this is just going to be a case of Jeremy hunting everyone down, so I'm not going to waste too much time. Okay, so he has left the town pretty undefended, we know that the towers do like to go for the Corsairs, so let's split them. As he has just got the three stacks. Okay, so our fastest creature is speed 10, his is speed 9. I think we probably want to go for the haste. Yeah, so I think those losses were pretty much inevitable, but never mind. Okay, so we've taken his town. It should give us Haspids. So if we just jump in... We can upgrade these. So the difference between a Sea Serpent and a Haspid is, one thing is Haspids get revenge, which I honestly don't know exactly how that works. It's it's something to do with the more HP you lose, the more damage you do, and it's extremely powerful to the point where Haspids can pretty much go up against any tier 7 in the game. But yeah, like I say, I don't know quite how it works, but for me the, the most obvious thing is it takes us up to speed 12, uh, it gives us 300 HP instead of 160, so that's now a really strong stack. And we should be in a very strong position to go and chase down Spint. I'm going to see if I can get Solme back to Jeremy. We're just going to leave Jeremy with nothing but the Haspids. I think he could probably still win, even in that fight. That should mean Jeremy is slightly faster next turn. Outside of that, let's just keep working on our Inferno Town, so let's go straight for the Demon Gate. Leave all the slower units behind. I can actually go open a few things up, so I think I should probably do that. I am really tempted to see if I can go and take on uh, Green. But two Firebirds, six Psychic Elementals, and not a lot else. I'm not sure that's quite enough. I think I'll go and pick up the extra five Psychic Elementals. So let's send Lord Heart up. Uh, Kasmitra we're going to send to the west. I'm pretty sure from looking at View Air there's pretty much nothing in this direction, but we might as well have a look. So yeah, there's, uh, there's a Desert Zone to the west, but it's pretty much empty. And uh, there are a few resources here to pick up, so let's just go for it. In this town, we are going to upgrade to frigates. And then next turn, we're going to pick up a decent batch of units, and we're going to try and transfer them over to Gernison. As for Gernison, I think he's safe just to stay in place for this one turn. I'm not going to overcomplicate things too much, let's send the turn there. Okay, so he manages to sneak back into his town. I thought he went to the north, but I stand corrected. He has gone into the town. Rotunda. That is going to mean a few more losses. But I still think it's massively in our favour. This 
This is going to make a very minor difference, but I am going to do it. So we can see that this gives us one extra health, which takes, for example, these guys up to 16 health. If we stack it with another one, it does cap at one, so we might as well just keep on the gloves. And... Yeah, just going to have to go for this. We will take a few losses from the towers, but nothing too bad, I hope. So he does have the acids, which means he gets to go first. I think the worst case scenario is if he goes for a mass haste, he could actually use the sea dogs um, and shoot our haspids. Although... Okay, so our haspids are actually slightly faster than acids, I forgot about that, so we will get to go first. Which means we can use mass haste before he does. Uh, I could also go for an attack. I think three Haspids are his biggest threat. But I do want to go for the Mass Haste because I want to get the Gargoyles in before anything else can happen. And I just want to make sure that the Sea Dogs can't attack our Haspids. Okay, so the Gargoyles are going to take some damage. These guys just have to go for an attack on someone. Let's go for these because they haven't gone yet. Yeah, so we're taking a beating to that stack, but we have got so many free Gargoyles that they're holding on for now. Uh, I was hoping I could lure them out, but I don't think that's going to work. Yeah, really taking a beating there. Alright, let's see if we can blow this open. Nope, doesn't work. Yeah, so the cannon can attack walls, but it's not necessarily that great at doing so. And I don't have Earthquake, so I don't have a great way in. I do have Teleport, but I don't think it works. No. Yeah, so we need a, a better Water Magic skill to pull that off. We go for the Meteor Shower. We can pretty much hit all their stacks at once. So this should actually work. So if we go down to here, that should stop the Haspids from moving out. The problem with that, of course, is it allows the Sea Dogs to do something to us. Though the Haspids are actually trapped either way. Might not matter too much. Okay, so the Haspids are gone. We can't attack all three of these stacks without damaging our Gargoyles. I think I'll still go for this. Still got low morale. Yeah, still no luck breaking through. This is kind of a problem. So we've already lost about half our Gargoyles. We don't have Resurrect. So we pretty much sacrificed our stack. Let's see if I can draw them out. On the other hand, they have so little left. Okay, so we've managed to draw these out. We do lose the last of our Corsairs. There's not too much we can do here, really. We do just have to blow down the walls. And it's really not working for us. We could try and cross the moat. We should be able to do that without too many losses at first, so let's just go for it. And then these guys can go get a kill. Let's lightning bolt these. Finish off these, and hopefully these can get the kill on these, which they can't quite. Yeah, so we're going to take one more round of shots. Unless we go for this. So cannon saves the day, but yeah, we take such a heavy loss to the Gargoyles. I'm hoping that's worth it. Uh, we do get all his stuff. We have taken him out altogether. That's the other thing. He can't flee. Um, but I think this is his final town. So yeah, he's now down to just Sanya, who has almost nothing. So if we just leave any kind of token defense in the town. I think the Gargoyles have served their purpose, so let's leave those behind. Upgrade the Tower of the Seas, and let's upgrade these. Okay, so Jeremy, I'm going to send straight back to our Inferno Town. Going to be a bit of a trick. But then we can start focusing on green. And if we go back to our original town, we can pick up some Acids, we can pick up some Nyx. 
And that's all of our gold gone, but I think that's probably a good enough force for now. So let's start the chain. Pass all of these over. And we'll start moving back so we can upgrade a few of those weaker units. And then Gurnison should be pretty safe to take on the Swordsman. This is slightly risky, but I think it's worth it. Yeah, it all kind of depends what Green has. I'm, I'm willing to take the risk. Yeah, so the best hero will have probably just the one Hydra this week. Possibly three. But yeah, all in all, I think we should be completely fine. Worst case scenario, we lose Gurnison and uh, they come to attack. And we might lose our Inferno Town too. But we can keep building that up. Okay, so we have got some Magog, so we should be able to defend that pretty easily. I think I just saw Sanya to the north. So it was actually Sanya who went to the north, and uh, Spin, I think it was, managed to sneak past us. Which did result in quite a few losses, but not so many losses that we're going to have a hard time against Green. And Jeremy at this point is only really one day's journey behind um, Gurnison. So what I might start doing is assuming we're strong enough, which I think we are. We can probably just start skipping most of what we do with our turns. And Gurnison could actually give his units to Jeremy, if we're concerned. So if we go for view air, we can see that he's got one town to the southeast and one to the northwest. He's got at least, in fact, he's got four heroes just straight to the south. I think I am just going to send Jeremy through just because pretty much everything is to the south. Okay, so at this point we have just the two different creature alignments, so I'm hoping that's going to be good for our morale. Uh, we're going to pass over the scales of the Greater Basilisk. We're going to pass over Anti-Magic for Lightning Bolt, which I'm pretty sure we now have naturally. Uh, don't need Sorrow. Don't need Excess Artifacts. And yeah, I think that should be enough. I'm going to send Gurnison to the west, I'm not sure we're strong enough for this, but worst case scenario we just have to flee. As it looks to me like it's probably an Acropolis town to the northwest. Okay, so there's Eovacious, he's back, he's once again on our opponent's side. He's not their strongest hero, not by a long shot. I think that's fine for now. The red comes for the attack, doesn't manage to get a single kill, so that's good. Red is out. Uh, Eovacious is definitely just a scout. Weak of the Magog, which is great because we just upgraded. So we should have access to a healthy supply of those if he does come to attack us. Town is to the northeast. 
and it's pretty weakly defended. And this time at least we do have some really good flying units, so we shouldn't take as many losses. We will take a few losses to the towers, but that's okay. Let's just double check that we can't do anything about that. Yep, so pretty much inevitable. Okay, so we've taken his main town. We do have enough moving points to come back if we go to this. So Serena is to the south, definitely not his main. Let's check this again. So he does appear to have one more hero to the south of the monolith. I could probably just go and hunt them down. As because it's day one, he's not actually picked up any of his units, so let's just hire as many of them as we can. And yeah, I think I'm fine just to leave that stuff behind. If anything, I probably would rather have... Maybe the Wivens over the Sorceresses. Just because they can fly, but... No, I don't think it matters. I am going to go to the south with Jeremy. We're going to try and chase down his main. We're going to send Gurnison to the northwest and just hope that this isn't where his main is. It's fairly blocked off, which suggests to me this is not a main town, but as we go to look at it, it is in fact pretty strong. To the point where I definitely don't want to take it on. So we're going to have to try and bring Jeremy over, I think. Let's just jump through here, see what we can find. Okay, so he has got another main near here, I'm pretty sure. And, in fact, this is all linked up. So if we just jump through here... The way it looks to me is he has a scout on the water, and his main is probably just to the south of this path. Still, I think that should be completely fine. Yeah, so Serena doesn't attempt to do anything. Let's send Gurnison to the south just to get a better look at this, as yeah, there's definitely someone on the water there. I do want to go for his Necropolis town. I think I will prioritize that because we're going to have a hard time chasing down his hero on the water. So let's just put him on the seven day timer. Those losses look fairly acceptable. But I will see if we can do slightly better. What I might do is, I'll start by waiting, and just see if we can draw them out. Yeah, let's do this. Yeah, so we still got that bad morale, but that might actually be down to the liches in this case. Okay, so this time we do manage to break it open straight away, so that's great. Let's send these guys in to damage these. These guys can get a full power shot on these. And then these guys can go attack whoever they please. Once again, lose all our Corsairs, but that's fine. Let's go for these. Yeah, so I think I do prefer those losses. It 
It is now day two, so he's bought everything out in this town, but we can get Lena, who I'm pretty sure is Miss Moneybags. Basic estates, plus 350 gold per turn, and more importantly, she comes with some kind of defense, so that's pretty much perfect. So we just need to tuck someone in the town. Alternatively, we could just send Gurnison through. Let's try this. So worst case scenario, he sends his main up to attack Jeremy and we've just got the six Haspids, but even then, I think with the help of the cannon, we might actually have enough. So yeah, that scout's definitely not going to come to attack us, and if it does, it's not really a threat. Uh, no one's come to attack the Necropolis town. Go straight to the south. And let's check view air once again. So it doesn't look to me like he's taken any extra towns. He's still got Eovacious in the rough terrain, but Eovacious is fairly weak. Someone on the water to the very south, and someone on the water again to the south in the kind of middle. But I think his main is going to be just to the northeast. I think we can justify visiting this. So yeah, that is his main, that's Dracon. He's pretty good. But, I think with the help of our cannon, we should be okay. The thing is, I also don't have any spell points, so... I can't see any sign of a well. I still feel like this is winnable, let's just check this. So, haste is going to cost us 5 spell points, which means we can go for mass haste. I think honestly we can just risk this. Let's do it. Yeah, so we're actually expected to take very few losses. Let's just fight it out manually. And let's send everything forward. Go for the mass haste. And then these guys don't have a great target. Let's go for this. Now these guys should go for the most threatening stack, which I think is probably the Wivens. We're not going to do that much damage, but that's fine. Uh, we'll send these guys forward just to block these for now. We'll send these guys after the Basilisks. These guys can go for these, and then we'll weaken the Gorgons with these. These guys, I should have actually saved them for the double attack, although I can actually go for it on these two, so that's perfect. I uh, will take a few losses to the Sorceresses, which I don't mind. Yeah, a few losses across the board, but it's fine, and this is pretty much the final fight. Okay, 54 Lizardmen is going to be kind of awkward. Let's go for these instead. Yeah, I, I could have thought about this a lot more, but honestly, I, I don't care if I know I've won the game. Okay, so my losses actually weren't too bad, it was just the Acids, really. Okay, so at this point, they don't really have anything left except for Serena, or Serana, Serena, and Eovacious, who we know exactly where he is. So if we just send Gurnison back through here, and we start moving to the south. And hopefully take on Eovacious pretty quickly. 
In fact, thinking about it, he is in this direction. We're going to put Ayn in this town. We're going to pick up Lena. We're going to take all of the fortress units. And let's just go straight for Serena. Okay, so it's just the scouts left now. Eovatius has put himself in a perfect position to be attacked. Uh, this is taking a very long time. I think the AI is just considering all of his options and realizing there are none left. Okay, so if Gurnison goes to take on Eovatius, Eovatius does actually have Hydras, but because of our Ballista, I think we're safe to go for this. Let's take the risk. Yeah, so a glorious victory is expected. Just the one Hydra, let's just accept that. Go for basic logistics. Visit this because why not? And then we'll send Jeremy back through here. We know that someone's on the water actually, so how about we just jump across and try and hunt them down? I think there might actually be a couple of heroes left on the water. So we do have five spell points left. We can see yeah, one on the water there, and one on the water to the southwest of the fortress town. Okay, let's just tuck someone else into a town. Let's go back to this one. Pick up Lacus. Not sure Lacus really has enough, but I am just trying to close these guys down as quickly as I can. Okay, we'll see how that goes. Okay, so there's one to the very west here, and there's one to the very west here, so both of our heroes need to go to the west. If anything, this is probably what we should be using Elmore for. It's kind of his specialty, but he's quite a way away, so I don't think that's going to work really. There's a very slim chance that there is an island. Let's see if we can find them. Yeah, so they're 100% on the water. Alright, we'll try and chase them down. It might just be that we wait for 7 turns, but... There's not really a lot else we can do. Okay, so... Actually, they've captured another town. But they've actually got someone pretty decent left. They're clearly fleeing to the west. I don't know if we can actually land here. Okay, so we can land, but I'm not sure we have a direct way to chase them down. Still. I am actually going to go for navigation as my final skill. I did not expect to do that, but I think just in case we do end up chasing people down, that probably does make sense. And there is a Redwood Observatory to the south and a shipyard to the west. So we can hopefully visit both of those in one turn and jump on a boat. Yeah, I'm not going to waste too much time moving other things around. They do manage to break through something there, but I, I think I can just about reach them with Jeremy. Hopefully this is not a dead end, as yeah, we can see Axis. Let's take that town. And I think there might be one more hero to the north. I'm not convinced that was the final one. Yeah, one more hero to the north who I think is going to be slightly stronger. Let's see what they have. 
though they at least have Hydras. I'm hoping that's not who Lakers is about to go up against. It could be though. Let's see. So it's Andra who just has a few pikemen. Gonna have to try and chase her down. This is the other problem with water maps, but to be honest, stuff like this can happen in any map, so it's fine. Okay, let's see where they went. Okay, so they're they're very clearly in the wasteland. Visit this, that's going to enable us to cross the wasteland very effectively. And we have found them wonderful hydras. Wonderful wivens, but yeah, nothing really too tough, and we should be able to chase them down pretty easily next turn. Let's try and box them in. Yeah, pretty sure they've got nowhere to run now, so let's end the turn. They are going to attempt to get away, but it's not going to work. We can pretty easily chase them down. I'm not going to play this out, it's it's really an easy win. So yeah, we'll just accept that. And then this should be a pretty easy fight too. I think the safer option, of course, is just to go with Gurnison, and because this is the final fight... Let's just play it out, let's see what our Ballista can do. There we go. So that is the last of Green's heroes, and that is the last of our opponents. So we did get a chance to see pretty much all of Cove's creatures in action. Uh, it was a nice four-part series in the end, and that is going to be all for now. There are of course plenty more playthroughs on the channel if you'd like to have a look. They can of course all be found on the playlist tab. But that is all for now. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.